Hey guys, so here's what's happened since last update video. The clock tower area now becomes an active city at night. The entire field flooding system was optimized. Now it is controlled entirely by command blocks instead of using daylight sensors. When it becomes night, the water comes in and the city grows on top of it. The clock tower also raises to match the level of the water. I think it looks beautiful. The boiler room will soon have a new feature. Previously you stepped on a pressure plate to call the soot balls, and they were just retextured items shot from dispensers. Now the boiler room will have actual soot balls that carry coal from the storage area all the way to the furnace and walk back. The bathhouse just keeps getting more and more interesting. A lot of textures and custom block models have been made, including an oil lantern to replace the standing torch, a pink lamp to replace the standing redstone torch, a cornstalk to replace the sunflower, what's called a fuki plant that can be commonly found in Japan, a large fern, a 3D ladder, 3D bamboo and bamboo leaves, mud as soul sand, two types of bathroom tiles as rough and dark prismarine, more variants for the redstone block, a bookshelf with five variants, and a Shinto shrine statue to replace the filled end portal. I retextured the zombie villager to look like the women workers, and since they wear many types of outfits, I retextured the different armors to fit the different outfits. We have the formal red and white outfits worn by the women that stand outside the door greeting guests, as well as the bathrobe looking outfit which comes in three different colors, including the leather armor version that can be customized to any color. These women will be added to the bathhouse with the rest of the workers, running through the halls in predefined paths at certain times of the day. The real world area is being filled in with a variety of types of buildings, including a pet shop, a small bathhouse, a bakery, a tea shop, and a garden shop. Armor stands are being used in some of the builds to add further detail, like sushi in this sushi restaurant. Previously, when it was just me working on this map, there were many empty areas of the bathhouse. Only the major areas seen in the movie were complete. But now, thanks to my team, it has gotten to the point where I struggle to find a single empty room in the gigantic building. I think it's very close to being fully furnished. A lot of traditional Japanese houses were built around the school area of the Totoro world, and they're all very impressive. None of them are seen in the movie, but they add so much depth to the project because they are relevant to the time period that the movie takes place in, which is 1950s Japanese countryside. Lots of old tatami rooms and primitive kitchens, areas for shrines, and farmland everywhere. Someone even made a local bathhouse down the main road to further add to the completeness of the town. The hospital area from Totoro is finished, and that is the last major section of the Totoro map that is left. While designing the terrain, we were wondering why they walk their bikes up a hill if the hospital is way down below them, but we realized that it could be because tuberculosis patients were typically kept far away from society, sheltered by mountains. So it makes sense that the hospital area is surrounded by mountains, and in order to reach it, they had to go over the hill. So now I think the world of Totoro is ready to make a cinematic trailer for, similar to the way I did the trailer for Spirited Away. Once that's done, we can begin work on the world of Howl's Moving Castle. As always, we are accepting new builders at our application page, so if you'd like to join the team, click the link here. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.